Hi everybody, welcome to Dream Framer Photography. My name is Ivan and this is my fifth stock photography webinar or Photoshop webinar. Welcome. Uh, let me know if you can hear me and see me well, please. Um, the stream takes about uh, 15 seconds to be processed by YouTube uh, to get to you guys. So whatever I say now, you will be hearing in fift about 15 seconds. And then if you want to ask me something, um, or make a note about something uh, just uh, type in the chat and I will see it right away or you know I'm working out I'm working on uh, photography and uh, and uh, I will take a look at uh, at the chat every now and then to see if there are any questions so I can see that you guys can hear me and uh, see me I guess so um, this live chat um, also has a function of tipping uh, there's a dollar sign in the left corner bottom left corner if you want to uh, tip me you can do it by clicking on that one and uh, adding a couple of dollars dollars for me thank you in advance uh, if you don't if you think that the video quality is not good uh, just go to the gear sign in the bottom right corner of the video and uh, set it to 1080p um, and also um, I want to thank you for translating my videos. I already have a couple of submissions. They are still not finished, uh, but hopefully soon uh, I will have my videos translated into some other languages. Thank you guys for that. I'm going to share you the link, share the link with you in the description of this video, where you can click and add a couple of sentences on your language uh, to help me reach a bigger audience um, with the content that I'm providing. Um, also, if you are interested in uh, selling stock, selling photography online, and earning some money, and you are new, you are see you are seeing me the first time, uh, subscribe to my channel because that's what I'm doing here on YouTube. If have if you have any questions, uh, just type them in the in the chat or uh, make a comment on my videos. Send me an email; doesn't matter. I'm gonna answer to you. And pe people who do that, they know that I answer uh, in a few hours the latest like in one day because I also have a regular job and sometimes I just can't answer to all, all your messages right away uh, you can also reach me through my Facebook page and there is a link on my channel uh, you can connect with me that way too now uh, let's switch to Photoshop window I want to show you today how to create uh, panoramic images in uh, Photoshop which is uh, really good if you are taking pictures with uh, with uh, let's say an older cell phone so let's say the cell phone camera has only 8 megapixels and you can't really do much with that kind of ca camera you can take a couple of pictures and make panoramic image which is bigger and then shrink it to the size that is acceptable by stock photography and that way increase the sharpness decrease the noise and increase the quality of the image in general hi everybody uh, hi Pedro hi Dylan dog hi muscle studio and uh, all the rest so let me switch now to to Photoshop window okay so I prepared uh, a couple of images for you guys that we are gonna um, merge and create create a panoramic image you do that by going to file and then automate and then you choose this last option photo merge so not merge to HDR we're gonna do that some other time for now just go to photo merge and then this dialog will be open <clears throat> you have different layouts to merge your images sometimes you can um, experiment with these to get the best result what I found is that most of the time auto works totally fine and down here you have a couple of options for these images I'm gonna explain those options when I load images okay so I'm gonna click on um, browse and I have three images images of San Francisco now and uh, I will merge only two for this tutorial I can merge all three but it will take more time to edit them later and I don't want to spend much of your time so I'm gonna merge only these two images I'll explain why these two images are taken they are aligned better by default because uh, you see this curve here that's the same curve over here and the same curve on the third image is a little bit higher so on this image I caught a little bit more of this part of the landscape 
and I don't have that on these two images which means that if Photoshop aligns all three it will align them to match this curve with this one with this one so I will basically lose this part of the image and I will also lose upper parts of the sky from these two images because this image doesn't have that so that's why I decided for this tutorial to merge only these two so I'm clicking on the first one control clicking on the second one and I'm gonna click OK Teddy bad boy says please make a video on Pike's software <laughs> Teddy I have to see what that is I don't know about that software but you know I, I'll take a look and I'll let you know I've never used it obviously so we'll see if I can do it um, so now we have these two images loaded in as source files for our panorama we have to check blend images together obviously and then this check mark here vignette removal uh, we don't basically need it for these images because my phone doesn't make any vignettes vignettes are those dark corners around the image you know like when you have a photo and then uh, corners are kind of darker than the than the mid part and that's because the lens sometimes does that uh, at certain um, focal lengths so you can click that to remove that automatically Photoshop will remove those darker corners to blend images better I'm gonna click it anyway because it's not gonna make any change it doesn't matter uh, this button button here uh, will force Photoshop to try to um, fix any distortion correction on the image let's say you're standing on the hill and then you take a picture then you move your camera to the right and take another picture and if you simply stitch these images together you might get a result that is like a panoramic image but skewed like arc basically not flat horizontal so I'm gonna click that I figured out that that works well in almost all cases very rarely you will have to untick that first try to click it and click OK uh, to see how it looks like how the result looks like if it looks bad then just go back close that file do this again load files again and then uncheck this mark and uh, and try to try to do it again content aware fill I don't like to use that because this is you know uh, no two photos will match completely to get to to you know to make a perfect panorama you will always have some always have some parts you know that are missing uh, and you will see that when we do this I'm gonna explain what that is so if you if you click this box uh, Photoshop will fill these empty areas with content that Photoshop thinks is the right content but if you want to have your images to be authentic you don't want to add anything that is not there already so I'm gonna uncheck that as I mentioned before these layouts for me most of the times auto works the best but you can experiment with these and get different get different results for now I'm gonna leave it like this and I'm just gonna click OK Photoshop loaded the first image and the second image and now it's gonna try to process images aligning layer this layer the first one and then it's gonna try to align the second layer with the first one Photoshop aligns these layers uh, according to the content of the image so it's gonna try to match every building on the first image with building with the same building on the second image and as a result we're gonna get this panorama and we still see our two layers here our two photos they have masks layer masks so the black part of this mask is actually showing us that that part of the layer is hidden and the opposite side of the mask on the first layer is dark is black which means that from the first image this part of the layer is hidden and as a result we have this panorama so you remember when I mentioned that last checkbox that says um, something like uh, fill the areas uh, with content uh, content aware fill the area something like that so if I click that Photoshop will fill out the sky here and here which is okay that's fine I mean we're gonna cover this anyway but Photoshop would also add some content here and it would probably add some trees and buildings which I mean it's okay you can use that I just didn't want to use that because it would put some buildings that are actually not there in San Francisco right 
and here I will kind of cover this a little bit with uh, with um, spot healing brush tool. For now, let me just crop this better, so we can actually. So let's let's do something like this to cover this empty edge, and something like this. That's fine. And over here, I want to do this. And now I'm going to click to confirm. So let me see if this corner here is actually not maybe an empty area. I'm going to click Control Plus and drag to that part of the image. Yes, we have a little bit of empty pixels here. So I'm going to use um, the Spot Healing Brush tool decrease the size of it and oops something is not oh yeah yeah and that's the problem see this is live program so I have to merge these two layers to make it one image because I'm currently working in the top layer and top layer uh, has empty pixels here so nothing's gonna happen if I try to cover that so let's select both layers by clicking control or command on Mac and right click merge layers now we have one layer and that's actually one image now I can use spot healing brush tool tool and cover this I'm gonna do the same here there you go covering all this Hopefully Photoshop will do it, do a good job. Yeah, that's perfect. Good here. That's it. Now we have only sky. For this sky, you have a couple of options. You can do what we did the first uh, in the in the last video. I, I was just selecting uh, the let's say the, this part of the sky, and I would go to Edit, Transform scale click here and just stretch it confirm and control D to deselect or you can just go to select and click deselect so we can do something like this or let's undo this and deselect or you can simply use again um, spot healing brush tool and try to cover that with it. Whatever works better. Let me just check those. Okay, Photoshop did a good job. For some reason, Photoshop often leaves uh, this so we were talking about this um, line on the top of the layer these empty pixels here and what I did is I selected the whole image with uh, with my rectangle marquee tool so this one here and I'm gonna zoom here to show you better what I'm doing so right now as the whole layer is selected uh, empty pixels on the top are selected as well I'm just gonna click my uh, down arrow key few times to cut that off and on the bottom of the image you see that selection is moved down that's that's okay nothing's gonna be selected there and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click image and crop and there you go we crop the image and this is the basic image that we're gonna be working on um, so we created it out of two uh, separate cell phone images of San Francisco. So let me deselect that. I'm going to select and deselect or just clicking Control D on the keyboard. And now let's improve this image a little bit. I'm going to go to Filter, um, Camera Raw Filter. And let's see what we can do with it. The 
main thing when you are trying to correct the image is to see what's wrong with it. I mean, you can play with all these settings and do whatever you want, but first you have to see what's wrong with the image. The first thing, and you're going to learn that, you know, in time, don't worry about it. So the first thing I'm seeing here on the image that I really don't like is kind of the haze, which is natural for, is that, <laughs> especially for San Francisco, there is always some haze. You have very few really sunny, clear days over there. And then the whole image looks kind of blue. Uh, I mean, colder tones, right? And this is what I'm going to hit first. So the first thing I want to do is correct the haze a little bit. I'm going to click on this F, on this FX tab and just move the haze slider a little bit to the right. At the same time, the the sky becomes darker, which is nice. I like that. And let's go back to the basic tab and increase the clarity a little bit, just a little bit. Increase the vibrance to add some color to it and now let's um, warm it up a little bit so this temperature slider will do that I will push it to the right something like this that's more like it now if you want the sky to be a bit uh, more blue you can just go to this uh, hue saturation and grayscale Click on saturation tab, grab the blue slider and push it to the right a little bit. Just like this. And if you ask me, this is, um, we don't have anything else to do in, um, in camera raw. You can see that um, we have some noise in the sky. We can try to fix that. There is some black dot over here. That's okay. We're going to fix that in Photoshop. But let's try to fix this noise a little bit. Although, you know, when you have a noise that is really coarse like this, like grain more than a noise, then it's kind of hard to fix that. Uh, let's try anyway. So I'm going to uh, Detail tab and I will grab Luminance slider and push it to the right. So we covered a little bit of that noise. Let's see if we didn't mess up the city because those details uh, can be ruined by this. And you see those trees, they look like smudges. Let me move that back to see how they look like originally. Uh, not much better. And that's because cell phone camera already applies noise reduction. So be careful with noise reduction slider when you are editing your image images from from the cell phone so I'm gonna do something like this and let me see if we can maybe improve some sharpness I doubt it though because JPEG images are not that easy to correct with sharpness slider and that's why I always advise if you have an option to take raw images always do it this is good actually because I'm going to decrease the size of the image to 6.3 megapixels and that will improve sharpness additionally. Did we add too much noise in the sky? Maybe a little bit. We're going to fix that later. Okay, let's zoom out. And this is a nice panorama. Let me click OK and go back to Photoshop. This is the original image and now you'll see the new one. So this is the new version basically. Let's copy that layer so we can save the original one that we just edited and create a duplicate of that one to work on that one. And this one is just, you know, in case we mess up something here. So first, let's check that noise again. I'm zooming to 100%. You see this number here, 100? If I zoom out, it changes to 66.67. If I, you know, zoom in, it's going to be 100 again. Let's check that noise again. Mm -hmm. We have to fix that. You can do it in many ways, but the simplest way in this case, when you have half of the image that is basically sky and clouds, so not really any detailed features, you can do it just by simply grabbing this blur tool, right? I'm going to increase the size of it like this. 
and I can just go and and blur this. Let me zoom in to show you how that works. So I'm going to decrease the size of it a little bit. You have the strength of the tool here. No, right now it's 50%. If it's too much, you're just going to go and decrease that. Because the effect of this tool is, um, let's say, like kind of piling up. If I do this once, it's going to blur a little bit. If I do it again, it's going to blur more. So be careful with it. In this case, we can even put more, maybe 100% even. And just go over it. And we will additionally decrease the, the size of the image. So we're going to decrease the noise. I'm going to just go like this and be careful not to touch the buildings. And that's fine. No one's going to check for noise in this area here because there is a lot of texture there. Uh, there is a lot of details over here and that's where you can't really notice the noise. But in these areas like this sky, you can see that clearly. So now let's wait for Photoshop to, to apply noise reduction that we did. Kind of noise reduction, it's just blurring, right? Yeah, that looks better. When you're using this method, you also have to be careful not to make color banding. Sometimes when you have two similar uh, shades of the same color, like this darker blue and lighter blue, sometimes you can make a really sharp edge between them. And um, if the inspectors at stock websites notice that, they're going to reject your image for color banding. Let's save this file now just in case you know sometimes it happens that Photoshop crashes so you don't really want to that to happen let's call it SF panorama we don't need this one that San Francisco panorama save it as PSD file Photoshop file let's see how big our image is image image size so 7,600 7, pixels times almost 3,000. That's almost, that's kind of, uh, yeah, more than 20 megapixels. We're going to decrease that. That's awesome. If you're not happy how this looks like, you can always add additional filters. For example, I know I mentioned those uh, Nick, um, Nick collection filters that I use most of the times when I edit my landscape and uh, cityscape photos and from this collection I use mostly this one color effects pro 4 so let's try something with it let's try to change the tone of the image uh, this uh, filter it's not just one filter it has a lot of filters built in and uh, they are awesome especially for uh, landscape photography what I like to use the most from this collection is this bicolor filters uh, collection here. You have all these filters down, some of them for nature, some of them for portraits, uh, for weddings, for you know all kinds of stuff. So this red line shows us before and after. On the left side is the original image, on the right side is the image, uh, the, the final result. Here you can change the color set by color filters mean, means that uh, there is one color on the top and the other color on the bottom. And now let's browse a little bit and see what works the best with this image. Just set the colors and then you're gonna uh, additionally tweak that to look the best. Do you have any suggestion? If you see what I'm doing. Mm, I would say maybe this one because it has warm tones on the bottom and cold tones on the top. This is probably a bit too much. So I'm going to decrease the opacity of it like this. And vertical shift. Let's see how how low we want this blue. To see that better you can increase the opacity to 100% and 
the uh, decrease the blend so you see what you're doing hi Krishna Dev. now let's decrease actually let's first increase the blend like this and decrease the opacity to something like this and that's it I'm happy with it let's check before and after yeah we added some worth warmth on the bottom of the image and we added some more blue on the top let's click OK um, this uh, filter will add another layer on top and apply filter on that layer so you have your original layers uh, saved There you go. If I turn this off, you're going to see the difference. It's not a big difference, but it looks nice. Now let's save the image again. Just going to click Save. And let's add some info to it. So I'm going to File again. File Info. And now it's kind of uncomfortable to type here because the keyboard is on my left side and my tablet is on the right side so I kind of have to um, move a little bit okay so let's call it San Francisco panorama panorama okay the author is me and the description will be Panoramic, panoramic image of San Francisco taken from Twin Peaks. That's enough. Maybe we can add taking from Twin Peaks with downtown or financial area that's better or maybe it's more correct panoramic image of San Francisco with financial area taken from Twin Peaks that's better copyright status is of course copyrighted as soon as you, as you take a picture it's it's copyrighted you have the copyright and I'm just gonna add my alias here okay let's save it again to save the info and while the image is saving let's pull out the calculator did I click on that I did but my computer is a bit slow so let's wait for it okay there you go we don't need any more interruptions today right that internet connection was enough okay the calculator is here um, I'm gonna click on image size to pull out the image size it has to be in pixels when you do this remember that so right now the image is seven six four eight seven six four eight times two eight six one eight six one that's almost 22 megapixels let's decrease that this is going to be 2000 multiplied with 5000 something that's going to be more than 10 megapixels so let's decrease that a little bit more maybe like this if you put the height too small some uh, stock photo websites will not accept it so try not to go under 1800 so I'm not gonna even calculate more I'm just gonna click OK the image will be shrinked let's check it now at 100% zoom right now it's 25% so let's zoom it more and this is the zoom level that inspectors will use to 
ex um, to inspect the image I can see here I don't know if you can see that on YouTube I can see here some coarse noise that I really don't like so the sky is still kind of a problem here not so much on this side this is fine so I have to figure out how to cover this you can do it in a few ways like anything else in Photoshop one of the ways in this case would be the next approach you have basically light blue color here you have darker blue tones over here what you can do is you can use the clone stamp tool so this one go to their options and instead of the mode it's usually normal by default that copy that will copy the pixels from one area to another if you don't want to copy everything you can just click darken and the tool will pick up only the darker pixels from here and cover pixels that are lighter than these pixels on this side to show you how that looks like i'm gonna i'm gonna increase this oops increase the size of the tool a little bit and uh, i'm gonna decrease the opacity because you don't want to apply the effect at 100 percent right away because might that might be too much so let's let's do this uh, i'm gonna click alt and take a sample from here by clicking with my mouse and i'm gonna increase the size of the tool a little bit and try to paint over this area i hope you can see how that works it already looks better yeah i think that's fine we created a little bit of a mess here this line here we're gonna fix that we're gonna get a sample from here and try to cover that there you go maybe a little bit more there you go now this looks better I'm happier maybe a little bit here you see that like um, coarse uh, it's like a mess between darker blue and lighter blue so let's try to fix that too this time I'm going to decrease the opacity for the tool even more to maybe 10%. Grab a sample from the darker part of the sky and just do this. And that's fine. I think this is okay. Let's save the image now again. I will save PSD file anyway because I don't think we can do much with this image and we can't really use the full size version either so let me click on file save as and save it also as JPEG version to upload save maximum quality and we are done with Photoshop now we can go to XPix over here and add that image to to add keywords to it the computer is a bit slow today and I know why it's super hot here it's over 90 degrees in San Jose which is about over 30 in Celsius and uh, my laptop is overheating so it's trying to slow down so let's find our image that's our panorama open and XPix will import the description and the title for the image now let's add keywords to add keywords I have to click on suggest this window will pop up we have uh, a list of stock websites to choose keywords from I usually just leave it at Shutterstock that's my best seller and in this box we need to type a couple of keywords that are essential for our image like for example San Francisco and do I need to add panorama or just cityscape or just San Francisco I think I'm gonna leave it at San Francisco for now to see what kind of results I'm gonna get I'm clicking on search
and there we have Golden Gate thousands of images of Golden Gate I have an image like this maybe this is even mine who knows <laughs> so this is not these keywords are not the best because they mostly show Golden Gate and uh, not really the whole panorama of the city so let me just add panorama to here to this box and search again No, not much better, right? Maybe this one, this one. Let's see this one. If nothing, we're just going to add. And let's choose one of the most popular images here. So these on the top are most popular. Even though it's from another angle, but we're going to review keywords anyway, so don't worry about that. So I can see that um, XPix obviously updated and changed, uh, changed a little bit. So I guess we don't have these two boxes on the bottom. This is the f I'm seeing this for the first time. So let's check suggested keywords. Aerial, Modern, San, Metropolis, USA, America, Panorama, Landmark, Architecture, Skyline, View, Francisco, Urban, California, Bridge. Mm, do we have a bridge on our image? Not really. I mean, there is a Bay Bridge in the distance, but we don't really see the bridge. Cityscape, Building, Pyramid. Uh, okay, I'm going to leave Pyramid. That's one of the buildings that is very prominent in San Francisco. So it's probably there on our image among these skyscrapers downtown business city travel tower street blue office um, those are office buildings okay let's leave it although this is not really a picture of our office right beautiful pacific ocean tourism area famous bay financial sky district landscape skyscrapers so 37 let's add some more um romantic panoramic center vacation okay let's put that too why not water mm. no one's gonna search for water if they wanna you know get the image of San Francisco investment maybe development yes corporation yes Twin Peaks that's the location where we took picture from above yeah that's the the angle we t we took the the image from uh, let's say kind of above um, American, sunny, <clears throat> that's already 47, Vista, um, San Francisco, we have those as separate keywords, and um, let's add those keywords, click close here, and do we have US? No, okay, and do we have USA? Do we have United States as words? Let's see. <laughs> so we didn't have any of these two words, United States. That's funny. People miss that. And since we have 51 word and we need just 50, we have to delete one of these words. So we're going to choose the least relevant one. Maybe corporation or investment let's click investment I'm gonna select this image now and click save and now as this image is already selected I can go to upload all my websites are selected and I'm gonna click upload to upload the image so this is it let me see what time it is we have 10 minutes more for any questions if you guys have questions please let me know i'm in the chat now i'm looking at the chat I guess no questions today so I apologize one more time for 
for the interruption. It happens. Uh, it was the internet connection. I had to restart my router. Luckily, I could continue the the stream because YouTube warned me that if I stop streaming, I'm not gonna be able to continue, which m would mean that you guys would just, you know, you would not see me today any again, and you would need another link for another webinar. So let's hope this doesn't happen. Unfortunately, I will have to delete this webinar because YouTube doesn't allow me to edit that part and to cut it off and just stitch together um, two parts of the video. Maybe I can do that, but I will have to create a new video and still delete this one. But you know, these webinars are free, so it's not like you paid something to, to follow them. I'm going to be here again doing similar stuff so no worries about that i hope today you learned how to create a panoramic image in photoshop and next week we're going to do something else okay so no questions and see you guys in the next video bye